Hello and Namaskar. On behalf of SchoolNet India, we welcome you all for the fifth episode of Unwind, a webinar series focusing on the teacher happiness quotient. As we are getting ready uh, to welcome the new academic session, a number of uh, new developments are taking place around us. The new national curricular framework has been rolled out for us to uh, share our feedback. We uh, will eventually, uh, this, this proposes to bring about many seminal changes in the educational practices, in, especially in the pattern of examination. We will eventually need, to, uh, need us to realign our teaching uh, practices radically. On the other hand, uh, the la large language models like chat GPT knocks at our door to be taken serious note of. So a new uh, uh, session therefore is going to be filled with new challenges, new hopes, and uh, you would agree that uh, new perspective to be adopted. In all these things, the teacher's happiness plays a major role in, in embracing the sweeping changes and making the classroom a vibrant place. I'm Vagish Jha and I head the learning and development wing of SchoolNet India. And I'm Karnika Vyas. Namaste. I am associated with SchoolNet India as digital learning officer. And today we have with us our guest speaker, Mr. Prashant Maharishi. Welcome you, sir, to our webinar series, Unwind. But before we tell you about this webinar, let me quickly tell you that SchoolNet India is the pioneering organization in India that was founded some 26 years ago to leverage the digital technology for education with a very strong vision and mission to support tech-enabled learning and democratizing education, not only in our country, but other countries abroad as well. So as of now, to let you know that we work with more than 40,000 schools that include both government and affordable private schools. And adding to what Karnika said, SchoolNet India is dedicated to improve the teaching and learning efficiency in the classroom and help children achieve grade-specific learning outcomes by offering a variety of solutions and services. We believe that teachers are the, uh, are the key to lead a digital transformation to create a more throbbing learning teaching ecosystem. This is why SchoolNet India continues to uh, give capacity building uh, of teachers as the prime focus of its uh, attention. Thus, we uh, focus on addressing emerging concerns of the teachers and the school community. This webinar series, Unwind, has this objective in focus. It is heartening to see today that we have teachers, educators joining us from all across the India. Together, we will undertake a journey of ideas and share views. Welcome Absolutely, sir. Absolutely, sir. And I am very sure that today, or whosoever teachers are joining us, they will agree to the fact that creating a happy classroom environment is a common goal for many teachers. This has now become evident with many of the initiatives taken at the systemic level, such as starting with the happiness curriculum by Delhi government, which is designed to strengthen the foundation of happiness and well-being for all our students. That is absolutely correct, Karnika. And finding happiness in classroom goes beyond the individual well-being. It is about creating a culture that fosters collaboration, engagement, and lasting love for uh, knowledge. Also, a happy classroom helps children's creativity and leads them on the path of becoming a self-directed learner. Isn't that the final goal of education after all? Absolutely, sir. With the teaching experience I have, I realize that achieving happy classroom doesn't have to be complex or complicated, but it does need to be intentional. So we teachers need to work to cultivate an atmosphere conducive to creativity and collaboration. So we sincerely hope that today's session will help all our participants to internalize the importance of creating happy and that safe space for all our children. So with this positive spirit, let's deep dive into today's discussion. And let me take the wonderful opportunity to welcome our guest of honor and expert of today's uh, session, Mr. Prashant Maharishi. Uh, Mr. Prashant, who is a dynamic personality with a professional experience of two decades, spanning into the field of education, technology, customer interaction. And after his stint as a Teach for India fellow from 2013 to 2015, he launched his own startup, iTeach. Soon after his fellowship, 
he he used his startup to fill the gaps and opportunities in teachers professional development for an ecosystem transformation this brought him laurels as the most innovative startup 2016 and best service startup by cii presently he is associated with the schoolnet as chief learning officer so as you can see prashant comes up with a very huge experience and diverse uh, expertise without any further ado let me welcome prashant again and uh, i would like to uh, have your questions uh, addressed by prashant at the end of it so please the right in in the chat box right away wherever you feel that you need to ask a question and please stay with us till the end because we have to make some very important announcements also over to prashant thank you agish ji thank you dr karnika for giving me this opportunity to present myself in front of this august audience of teachers educators coming and joining us all across so without Uh, taking much of your time i would like to quickly share my screen with a presentation which is going to guide us through these next 45 minutes is my screen visible to all vagi ji dr kanika yes 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 okay so now everybody please be ready with your notebooks pen and paper this is going to be a very important webinar for you trust this is going to be a very tough session as well okay and you must take notes and stay attentive am i clear you're trying to, you're trying to frighten us <laughs> oh, yeah so yeah so i think uh, vagish ji has got a gist of it hold on you know this is let's reflect now how were you all feeling when i started my session like that immediately vagish ji just because i know that dr karnika and vagish ji were not aware and how how i am going to start the session but let's reflect on our feelings let's think about our mood our emotions my image in your mind was i respectful right i'm sure that you might be thinking like it was a bad decision for you to join this webinar today but that's not the case the point which i want to make here is a happy tone sets a happy culture whatever we start if it's happy happy starting will leads to a happy ending as teachers as educators in classroom with those 40 50 brilliant you know blooming kids in our classrooms irrespective of any mood any feeling happiness that tone should always be with the teachers to start the day happy to start a class happy and to end our sessions happily that's the point which we are going to deliberate more upon in these coming up uh, in the session so we talked about the feeling mood emotions Image, respect. These are so very important components of leading to a happy culture, which sets a happy culture. So remember, it's important to convey our rules, clear our expectations, set the tone. But happy tone always sets to set up a positive culture. That's the case in point which I wanted to make by starting with that threatening sort of an introduction for this session. Vagish ji and all, please excuse me for doing that. Yeah. so welcome you all i really enjoy being with educators teachers that's this is my passion and you know whenever i am being uh, i am with teachers uh, i never believe in giving some sort of gyan or you know training the teachers it's all about having healthier conversations talking with each other but because this is a webinar format unfortunately we will not be able to do that we will be able to take it do it in our uh, chat format so let me start and welcome you by quoting carl jung here one looks back with appreciation to the brilliant teachers but with gratitude to those who touched our human feelings it's so very important to touch that human feeling he also quoted very important quote the curriculum is so much necessary raw material but warmth is the vital element for growing plant and for the soul of the child so we as educators definitely need to believe in that warmth which is the vital element which leads to the happiness quotient everywhere the way we behave the actions we take the way we communicate with our children please be with that vital element of warmth in your soul to to make our kids happy so today's webinar is designed the talk is designed around a happy classroom now teachers being the key levers definitely leads 
to happy classrooms and the i'm going to talk about few teacher essentials i'm sure that you being uh, you know being into your classrooms and with so much experience would be practicing so many these uh, effective strategies but this today session is just an attempt to revise even for me to revise to walk through to reflect and see that if we have discontinued few of effective practices best practices in our classrooms we can start and this session would help you in revising that and reflecting uh, on that so we're going to talk about recipes for classroom happiness with all these small uh, shortcuts which can definitely lead to make our students and us uh, ourselves as teachers happy so to set the session norm there are two simple norms of the session please stay attentive and use the chat box to ask questions two simple norms of the session right so teachers i have some goodies for you right today session i'm going to talk about building relationship with children happy classroom culture happy pedagogy this is going to cover a hook of a lesson check for understandings teaching aids levering technology how these all important elements can make our classrooms happy and can can make our lives as teachers much easier and comfortable so to start with building relationship with children no significant learning can occur without a significant relationship i'm sure that all in the forum would agree with this it's so important to have that healthy and effective relationship with our students with the entire ecosystem which would lead to effective and better outcomes not only the learning outcomes the emotional quotients of our students the emotional quotient of our ourselves parents all the stakeholders whom we deal with so um, i have you know uh, intentionally kept few small videos short videos because i firmly believe in seeing is believing so these videos are the real time videos which i have asked from teach for india to borrow and uh, demonstrate in front of you so let's watch a quick video here so what we saw first i would like to focus on the teacher actions she was full of anger anxiety focusing on negatives sarcasm not bothered for the problem there was no feedback she was not friendly no concern and care these actions were leading to what negative positive energy just think and reflect yes it was all negative energy all around so why building relationship with students is important i would like to delve a bit more on this point relationship help and impact both students and teacher motivation it gives enjoyment for learning children are more likely to request for the needed help it is this point is so important if children are not open with the teachers they are not interacting with teachers and they are just sitting like a dummy in a classroom what would you expect from a classroom how would you judge the learning levels how would you interact with uh, students if you have stopped with that communication because of a fear how will we reach out to those students mind to their heart to their soul children are less likely to stay disengaged and more likely to achieve at high levels if we establish healthier relationships in the classroom and that all this all leads to a happy and healthy culture in the classroom now let's watch the video again but with a positive behavior Two, three eyes on me. One, two, eyes on you. I want to 
on smart positions, eyes on Didi and lips closed. Brilliant class. Naveen and Gaurav, this is your first warning. Can you please stop doing whatever you're doing and pay attention on the board? Thank you. Naveen and Gaurav, you've already got your warning and I've cut down your points on the tracker. Now, no break time for you. You will not go out in the break. Naveen and Gaurav, I want both of you to come with me to the principal's office right now. So what we saw here, please note and think about the teacher actions. She was showing concern. At times she was just silent, just holding her hands and just staring at students. And that communication is in itself enough for a child to understand that what is expected. But though she was caring, she was friendly. It was a motivating behavior and a positive narration in whatever she was communicating with the children. Now, what do you think about these things? Right? It was all positive energy all around. So this is the point which I want to make here. Now let's also peep into our past. I would just encourage all of you to think about any one teacher from your school days whom you still remember. Now, can you think that why you still remember this teacher till date? Yes, because this teacher might have influenced your life positively in some or other way. So remember, the goal of building relationship with students is not familiarity. It is the influence that we create. And you think that influence comes from offering students their favorite ice creams, allowing students to play their favorite games, talking about strength or their weaknesses? No, not a big no. Rather, influence comes through building trust, building likability, modeling a positive behavior consistently. So important to model a positive behavior consistently. We should not, it should not depend on our mood that today I am happy, so I am you know behaving in a positive with a positive behavior, and suppose I am disturbed then I start behaving in a different way. I think I would discourage that behavior. Consistency in a teacher's behavior is so much very important and always motivating our children. So let's quickly also watch a video again to give you a better glimpse of a healthy classroom culture. This is a video which I love. All right, eyes on me. One, two, eyes on you. Okay. So before we start the phonics lesson, we haven't sung our countdown song today. How much time is left for our exams? Okay, we're going to sing the superhero song. I need energy, I need excitement. Give up all day and study your life. Give up all day and study your life. Give us two weeks, we show our life. Give us two weeks, we show our mind. Everybody stand back, where are you? Everybody stand back, where are you? Thank you. We're starting with me telling you what to do first, we're moving on to partner work, and then finally group work. So short A and long A. Since we've done this, you're not going to hear much from me. I want you to turn to the person next to you. We just need one whiteboard between the both of you. Please talk to your partner. Find one word each at least. More thing, five lines. Okay. Hey, what's the sound? L U. Long E. Think. We are reading the book called Harry Potter and the Philosopher's Stone. It is my favorite book ever. So we are discussing the potions master. And who is this potions master in Harry Potter? He teaches us personality traits. What, what about his personality? What do we know till now? I like Ron very much. Because his personality is extremely good. And he is very kind. And he doesn't like Hermione because she is bossy. Solution is the what? The answer. There are many solutions to your problem. Yes or no? Yes. Yes? Everybody is participating and everybody has ideas. So everybody's solution is fine. I don't want solutions which the author gave you. Okay? I want you to be 
thinking to be imagining of a better solution why i am giving you one question as a team is so that you can all think together we're going to have more brains to think together to get better solutions okay i don't want all four solutions to be call up hagrid call up a ghost call up dumbledore please think creatively okay start a good teacher have a personality like nirali didi and the other teachers give us only one chance if we don't give other chances how will be able to learn one chance is not important other chances are also important one not one time second time third third time we will we will get okay so hermani is going to do magic on snape and then and then you stop ignoring her okay why not he say don't think you are one as you think you are a brave boy and confidently the house is the house it was fancy the house it was grand with high tech new get get and glorious fans when i grow up i want to be a lawyer because i like to bring their justice the my dream is to be a sailor i want to travel the whole world and sail the whole ocean the i like to be kind that my father all is proud of me so you make a complaint to dumbledore about it what else can you do to fix this problem i feel very excited i feel very i feel very joyful that i will go to school and i will learn new things because school school is very extremely good all people can take anything but knowledge is the thing that anybody cannot take from you so now just take a second and reflect were you able to observe that happiness that confidence in the teacher in students so so much rich culture in the classroom where students were you know just open to discuss those healthy conversations were uh, encouraged by the teacher in the classroom and this is what somehow i define uh, somewhat i define it as a very healthy a open culture and if such sort of classrooms are established don't you think that teachers would start ha- happy would end happy students would love to come in the classrooms daily your attendance would have a consistent rate because te- students are loving to come and read with teacher be with the teacher so it's so very important to establish this kind of a relationship and that's the reason i'm using real life examples to just to demonstrate that everything is possible uh so when we talk about uh, let us also uh, start discussing about few strategies for building up uh, healthy relationships in the classroom uh you know it also depends upon lot of teacher actions so i would like to focus on the teacher actions i would encourage to create a positive classroom culture you have to increase the amount of time that a teacher and student spend together have students and teachers eat lunch together you can eat lunch with your students have consistent group discussions at least few times a week you reward the positive behavior rather than punishing misbehavior so if you notice some misbehavior you have to control it subtly and start rewarding the positive behavior which automatically leads to the lowering the levels of the the misbehavior in the class so we will talk more when we progress ahead in the session give students meaningful feedback example would be a positive narration can be this essay is great but why don't you focus on the words that i have underlined you have mastered adding two digit numbers but you still need to work on subtracting them right so the positive narration positive statements would encourage students and take them out of fear would start earning respect for you as a teacher get to know your students learn their names share personal artifacts sharing goals is a very good idea to do that think to know their families is also a brilliant idea which encourages and establish a very healthy relationship be respectful and sensitive to your students protect the students self esteem build goodwill on good days whenever you see that this is the right opportunity try to build your goodwill try to establish that relationship with your each student every child in your classroom tell students that they have ability to do do well increase their motivation increase their confidence self confidence so important visit your students students home and community this was the strategy which really worked for me by being with my students uh, visiting their community their home i was able to know their parents their where they are coming from what is their background what are the ch- challenges with that student it's so easy to stand up and shout at any child that hey 
you haven't done your homework today what was the reason have you reflected back that what were the real challenges in the in that student's family or house so these are sort of learnings which we get when we start to get closer to our students and if possible visit them on the days of celebration like festivals why not a teacher should definitely uh, be with the uh, students and families that gives a lot of exposure and access uh, to a teacher to know the students better we talk about classroom culture there are many components to it but these are three most important and critical ones how would trade them the rules rewards and consequences the entry and exit procedures and attention grabbers these components really help us building up happy and healthy classroom culture and you know happier uh, learning environment so when i talk about rules rewards and consequences research shows that having rules in a classrooms have multiple benefits students know what to expect and they understand the learning tasks better things in class run more smoothly with less confusion students have a clearer sense of what it takes to perform because they are it's connected with the rewards and consequences they give students these rules rewards and consequences give students the structure they need to help them feel that a classroom is a safe and predictable place this i would like to emphasize on this point of a predictable place when students start feeling that my classroom is not predictable i don't know i'm going to be punished today or ma'am is going to chuck me out of the classroom i'm going to learn or not children don't speak that often you know openly or uh, just with that openness unless and until we have that healthy culture but when start when students starts getting into that uh, circle of fear it starts creating those distances and students hum log se jo bacche hain wo dur hote chale jaate so it's very important to to establish that belief in our students mind that your classroom is a predictable and a safe place for you definitely to do that rules rewards and consequences helps us doing that the rules and consequences in a classroom are essential to explain to students what behavior is allowed and what behavior is not allowed here the teacher stance is very important and establishing clear rules definitely help us doing that rules are statements that describe the behavior we want to see in our student they set clear expectations of what is expected of students in the classroom just refer to the, all those videos which we have seen in past Right, the teacher was exactly following these strategies. It is essential that when we teach students rules and consequences, and we follow them consistently, we also reinforce the value and purpose behind those. These are important components of behavior management in our classroom, and if practiced religiously, will surely lead to happy classrooms. We can deliberate more, but in the constraint of time, I am keeping myself restricted to. we need to cover a few more slides and whenever we connect later i can we can deliberate more uh, on one to one also so let's talk about creating effective rules now if you see this picture a snapshot of one of our class rule picture which we have clipped from one of the classroom there are few to five rules they are clear simple and easy to understand they are positively stated effective rules i would discourage you to there's a lot of material on internet also to uh, research on what are effective and ineffective rules for the classroom like an example of do not hit it's a very sort of a you know a closed ended uh, instruction that do not hit children don't understand what how, how and what i have to do how do i have behave love everyone again very vague so rather if we say we move on to the consequences it's a sort of a positive consequence which we say as a reward and a negative consequence which might be again a positive narration so if you read you break it you fix it loss of privilege uh, privilege for the students might be you know withdrawing their lunch time or their sports time being with the teacher but in a positive behavior not punishing them but to tell them that this was not expected and this is the consequence for which you have to take your own responsibility and be that student who is a a, a shining star or be the student who is not at that level it should be equal for all when students see this equilibrium that equality in the classroom it it makes them feel safe in the classroom it's predictable so now consequence marzano said that this system should involve a balance of both positive and negative consequences purpose is to reinforce the behaviors we want our students to display positive consequences means rewards example giving points to students every time they behave in a way that is aligned to the rules 
and negative consequences would mean to discourage misbehavior the teacher actions which are which will be leading to discouraging the misbehavior in the classroom so example taking taking away their star points or every time students behave asking them to reflect uh, and I, as i said earlier being with the teacher during the lunch time to sit and do a 15 20 minutes reflection session uh, these are some important strategies which can uh, help you to establish uh, those you know discouraging misbehavior consequences let's watch a video again right i love how sumit has already started to write great job sumit excellent very good very good sandhya i can see you are writing the date very good i love how deepa is writing now very good great job sandeep has already solved the first question good check your answers the number of ticks is the number of marks you get so check your answer very honestly all right prathamesh did you check your answers check your answers quickly sanjali got all the 10 right so i'm going to give a star to sanjali can we all clap for sanjali very good nakshatra also got 10 out of 10 okay so you're going to get a star too very good nakshatra excellent komal got them right too great excellent so komal gets a star too excellent all right guys so last week the photo of red and green team was there on the board yeah. because they got the maximum stars the week before that now last week blue team got two stars yeah. so blue team won the team of the week award so i'm going to put your photo on the wall because blue team was the best last week so can we all clap for blue team now great job blue team excellent now this week i'm going to see which team gets the maximum number of stars so that i can put their photo on the wall next week is everybody going to try for that yeah how many of you going to try for that come on for that you all have to behave you have to listen to didi and you have to work very very hard as a team are we going to do that yeah right. so you might have observed the classroom you know these are kids even when a teacher is interacting there is no noise students are aligned to the rules you you might have observed one a uh, student just you know raising hands by putting the uh, finger on the lip so this is the way a teacher establishes those expectations by positive narration we by being with children and making those rules rewards and consequences absolutely few of them but very clear which ch children are able to understand so guidelines when you establish them do not harm the child's dignity a consequence not should not be in a punishment no asking a student to kneel down outside the class or standing while holding their ears sending them out of the class is not a suitable con consequence students do not learn anything from this and it harms the child's dignity be logical and gradual there must be a progression that a consequence follow for example the child must first be given a verbal warning then the place can be changed and if the behavior continues they have to spend recess with the teacher the consequence must be given at the same time as the action it should not be a repercussion later on there and then you have to establish it consequences should be related to the action not to the child very important you must address the action the child has taken and not the personality or a character of a child the action might be unacceptable but the child is not bad it is important to remember that difference when dealing with misbehavior you have to remember that that no child is bad it's the behavior that might not be an you know what be acceptable to us so should always also try to give specific feedback recognizing a student's effort should always be backed by examples of specific action this will help the student not only to understand why he is being recognized but also make it more likely for a student to repeat the same positive action and believe me this is an organic behavior it spreads it gets viral organically when a teacher few students start seeing uh, seeing that positive behavior positive narration rewards uh, for them the others also start falling in that similar lines so it gets viral now another classroom routine which can leads to a happy classroom culture are the entry and exit procedures all of you might agree that this is a time where most of the teachers face 
most, you know, the challenges uh, because there's a lot of chaos, uh, there's a noise, fight, and students behave the way they behave, you know, they are kids. So to avoid con and control fight, fights, noise and chaos in the classroom, entry and exit procedures can definitely help you. It saves time on daily tasks and maximizes our time on learning instead. It builds students' habit of being organized in students, so much important in their real-time world. And teaching students routines for entry and exit also teaches them the positive social behavior. This social behavior is not only important for them in their school or classroom, it's so important for them in their community, in their, in their home, and even when they grow up. So this is the stage where they start learning the positive social behavior. So uh, let's watch a video again. slow breathing. As you practice slow breathing, take this time for yourself to remember what we've been doing for the last few days in class. We read poetry by people from different walks of life, from a Dalit Muslim person to someone living in Kashmir, to a female prisoner in Ireland, to Ravindranath Tagore in colonial India. Think about how through these two days we have thought deeply about what freedom means in all of our lives. I want you to imagine once again what would your poem of freedom look like. Slowly come back to me. Welcome to your English class. So when we see this sort of a setup, you know, don't this, I think this is a sort of the expectation of a healthy and happy classroom where students are calm, teacher. And when we start, these sort of entry and exit procedures help us help the students to be calm. And as a teacher, we help them setting up that state, which would make those next 40, 50 minutes while we are delivering our lesson uh, really, you know, meaningful uh, because students are start, starting with that calm, with that attention. The focus has been brought by teachers by setting those entry procedures. You know, meditation is a good way that you can just spend and invest one or two minutes of yours to basically uh, ask your students to reflect or be with them calm themselves and start. Now we're going to talk about another uh, important element, which is uh, attention grabber. When you enter the class and students are not paying attention, what should be the first thing that you should do to get attention of a students? Because without that, whatever, as a teacher, we say, students are not listening to us. That's a lot of use. Yes, the answer is attention grabber. The best way to get the attention of our student is attention grabber. It is a strategy to get attention of 100% students. Make sure that when attention grabber is happening, 100% of students are engaged. This is very important because an effective attention grabber would be one where all students are pulled together to respond to the teacher call. And if they are not, they stop, repeat the entire process again. So you can make anything which is short, sweet, and catchy. And which, which the students will love to do it. And they wait for. I'm telling you, you know, attention grabbers are the ones when we start practicing them religiously, students wait that today I'm going to get something new from my teacher. So that's what the video. Two examples of effective attention grabbers are uh, for you here. Three eyes on me. One, two, eyes on you. I 
everyone smart positions eyes on didi and lips closed brilliant class <laughs> अच्छे बच्चे कैसे बहुत अच्छे क्लास ऐसे ही रहे या सो नाउ लेट्स कम ऑन टू द नेक्स्ट पार्ट विच इज हैप्पी पेडोलॉजी एंड व्हाट चिल्ड्रन लव यू नो सो ऑब्जेक्टिव and hook i'm going to talk about i'm going to talk about the check for understandings teaching aids and leveling technology this is the last section of this webinar and uh, these are important elements again which are the elements of a happy pedagogy which generally children love so when we talk about opening our lesson right just like to bring your focus on that a question that what will we do if we have a gift in front of us Yes, the answer is that we will open it. Similarly, every teacher's class is a gift for our students, and a teacher should open the lessons beautifully for making the kids happy. If we are able to do that, again, this leads to the happiness portion of the class and happiness portion of a teacher. So, how we start our class in the first five minutes to get our children excited about the topic is the opening of our lesson, and this should be a happy opening. And this should. Opening should make both teacher and students happy, right? So remember, each of our class is a gift for our students, and it should be opened with lots of excitement. Open a class, a very good and effective tool is a hook. You know, a fisherman. Whenever a fisherman tries to catch a fish, what does he do? He just puts something in the front of that hook and put it into the pond, and just to catch a fish. Similarly, a teacher to effect. we open up a lesson and grab our students attention and keep them engaged with the objectives of a lesson hook is a great tool okay something you know that can make our students think something that catches the attention of all student so we define hook as anything that will grab the attention of the students toward lesson and keep them engaged throughout this is a small mantra to actually when the students are engaged to an objective of the student you are enriching their knowledge by bringing their focus to the learning outcome of that particular lesson which obviously result in if the if your class is engaged is learning would it set a very happy and healthy culture so you hook your you use the hook as a tool to bring your class attention and focus throughout your delivery of your lesson so i would like to so like to quote an example here think about a last staff meeting or any session you might have attended and uh, the the way i started today right so chances are that if the presenters didn't convince you in the first 5 10 minutes then you probably didn't pay much attention hence a hook is an essential component to deliver a lesson happily by putting a hook great teachers pull their kids in right way and sell them on what they are about to learn it must be included in every lesson that we teach to make the students eager to know more about what will happen throughout the chapter and to keep them interested and involved throughout the lesson mind you session essentially the hook should be age appropriate simple and quick and captivating you have to design that there are no ready made mantras but when you are designing designing your lesson plan when you ever you are thinking about a lesson please think on these parameters that is my hook age appropriate is it simple and is it going to cause any confusion in the classroom or is it enough captivating please focus on these elements as well let's watch a video again for an important hook can you take a look at the smaller sheet that you all have it says raja bola raat hai rani boli raat hai mantri bola raat hai santri bola raat hai ye subah subah ki baat hai there are two questions on the board You have the next two minutes to discuss this in your groups. Go. One said that it is the night, so I will. Can you take a look at the smaller sheet that you all? So, this small is a small small example of opening up a class with a very thought provoking question, and. Uh, you might not even judge that what a teacher was teaching was it a hindi class or was it a you know evs class but it's it's not that relevant 
it's about how you bring that alignment of your the today's learning outcomes alignment uh, or the objective of a lesson alignment to open up your class with an a very captivating hook so that students start thinking that what is going to happen what am i going to learn what is this topic all about and this establishes a very happy and conducive culture in a class now another component here is the check for understanding now if you say if you are just asking a question from our students class okay children have you understood believe like everybody will say yes ma'am yes ma'am but the difference lies in just adding one word that what have you understood i think that's more meaningful question so that is what we mean about an effective check for understanding at the time when students are practicing to master the goal of a particular lesson it is very important for us to help our students to clarify any doubt or misconceptions if they have here we have to keep checking with our students who are able to understand what we have taught or we need to clarify it further or might we might be repeat our lesson again we call this technique sneak as check for understanding or cfu and check for understanding is what you conduct through the lesson throughout the lesson to gauge students understanding and respond to them right there are many happy ways to do this let's see how effective teachers are practicing these cfus in the classroom So today we learnt that noun is the name of a person, place, animal, or thing. Now, if you have understood, show me a thumbs up. If you have not understood, show me a thumbs down. Now. on a scale of 5 to 5 you have to show me how much have you understood where 5 means that you have not understood anything and 5 means that you have understood everything show me i'm going to draw out a name from the ice cream sticks and that girl has to solve this for me manashvi can you please tell me which are the nouns in this sentence the sentence is tina plays in the park the nouns are tina and park before you all start working on your own i want you to solve the first question together with your partners now all of you hold your notebooks up in the air to show me your answers now before you all go out for lunch you have to solve the exit ticket question for me only after you solve this question and hand out the slips to me will you be allowed to go out for lunch so so you know these were small examples of that how teacher were using uh, the the techniques of uh, check for understanding to gauge the Uh, understanding of the students to, during the class, and you can use it effectively. Children love doing it, and they are always engaged in maintaining that eye contact with the teacher to judge that whether this concept is clear or not. I should revise it, repeat it, or move ahead in the class. Now, another another important element are the teaching gates, the TLMs, teaching learning materials. These are also very important tools for a happy classroom culture. The question again. Now, how do we define teaching? I think a short answer is that teaching is to communicate an idea, and teaching is to communicate an idea. And what does teaching aid means? Teaching aids are the tools, materials that help in making that communication of the idea easier. Teaching aid can be any object, such a book, picture, map, device, or whatever you might think is appropriate for a class to bring and teach with the help of that tool. Uh, in a better and effective and a happier way believe me teaching and learning anything becomes easier and engaging with the help of teaching aids 
I have seen so many teachers using teaching aids uh, effectively, but I still uh, have observed that we discontinue this practice somehow because of in that, you know, race of finishing our syllabus or lack of resources. But I think if we start using teaching aids consistently, that would definitely lead to a, a good culture, a good learning environment. And, uh, you know, it's a sort of what the, the 21st century skills of experiential learning is talking about. It's a lot of experience, a lot of doing, learning by doing. So teaching aids definitely help us in doing that. I children really enjoy it by when they get something new in the class. It's not so just not just a textbook. It's also if we, you bring in something extra, teachers, uh, you try to uh, put that hook again by just placing that object on your table and students starts getting engaged. Okay, so the, the last topic uh, is also about leveraging technology for a happier classroom. Now, I would just like to walk through a small um, a, a, a concept basically how a child learns. When you think about this question, how a child learns, I think it's about by observing, listening, asking questions, experimenting or exploring, practicing, participating, right? These are six important elements which can define that this is the way a child learns. So there are different kind of learners, but these are the basic attributes. So we can define this as a multi-sensory approach of learning. And this, if we try to address this, it improves uh, the learning outcomes and help in better retention of a concept. You know, why leveraging technology is very important is because this is the punchline of SchoolNet also that every child learns differently. So leveraging technology in a classroom, a blended model definitely helps to make a life of a teacher easier uh, if you're not able to bringing huge maps or objects, technology can help you doing that. Even in your hook, in your check for understanding, while closing your lesson, while the that stage where students are practicing independently, every stage of your lesson plan, technology can help. So short video, which can, which will help you to even, you know, develop that confidence that how, what technology can do in a classroom. Knees and toes, knees and toes, and eyes and ears and mouth and nose. My class name is Responsible Champions Class and happiness is our foundation. So this is the foot. You have the foot here and you have the ankle here. The kids have so, so much trust see. in me and I have given them a commitment and if I don't deliver excellence and push for the transformation, what am I even doing here? You have joints all over your body, right? Teaching anatomy to kids who are actually many grade levels behind and don't know English was quite a bit of a challenge for me initially before I discovered the apps of 3D for Medical makes. But then after this app, it's made it fun to learn about our own body and skeleton. Before I started using 3D for Medical apps, the assessment showed that only 13% of the class actually mastered human anatomy. Bringing these technologies into the classroom, the mastery actually jumped to 94%. This is called the risk. And that's something that showed me, you know, the power of technology and the power of, you know, really, really awesome apps. So wasn't it a rocking classroom? You know, there are certain beliefs that you know, my kids don't know English, they are three grades behind. What will technology do? How will I bring this projector? How will I demonstrate it? If you have observed, it was a plain white cloth, not even a synthetic screen that that teacher had. Kids were sitting on floor. You know, it was a school where kids were coming from a economically challenged background. But irrespective of that, teacher has that confidence that if I'm not doing, you know, that justice to the classroom, to my kids, that why I, even I am here. So that's the spirit which touched the souls of students. And if that approach is there, that feeling, that warmth is there in a teacher, everything is possible, everything is possible. With that, I would rest my voice here and would thank you all for listening to me patiently. Uh, and I hope Dr. Karnika and uh, Vagish ji, I am well on time because it's three minutes left to four. So thank this you so much. Fantastic. This is fantastic. Thank you, Prashant. And uh, how your uh, session has uh, resonated with our participants. Uh, is reflected in the very interesting kind of questions that have come. 
myself and karnika will myself and karnika will take up uh, some of those questions uh, for you so uh, i uh, want to read out a question that has been posted by sunil kumar soni and uh, he has a concern that he says that uh, students in video video are little kids they do the mischiefs inadvertently i teach senior classes they take fun in humiliating the teacher how can i influence them when they are misinformed by the coaching teachers i think the similar kind of a question had come up with uh, somebody else on the chat uh, also uh, it is priyanka who is writing that in higher classes uh students don't listen to the teachers so uh, uh i am just putting these two questions together because they are similar type of questions uh, any response and uh, in the meanwhile karnika can uh, collate some other questions absolutely yeah so it's it's this is a very tough and difficult question and i have been uh, asked this question on several platforms uh bagi ji you know this is a chicken and egg story now when a teacher when the classroom can you stop sharing your uh, screen now yeah sure yes i know yeah so what i was saying was that it's a chicken and egg story and these are the the it's a it's a sort of a foundational level of work when we start doing it at the foundational level uh, when kids are trained that way uh, in the primary sections itself then this sort of a disruptive misbehavior definitely do not occur in the higher grades in the higher grades where adolescence steps in the students become independent thinkers they they try to see and control with that vision that you know like i am a adult i am a grown up changing the mindsets the attitudes their malleability is not in place but definitely um, it's a tough nut to crack but again by being very you know demonstrating a warmth with the students understanding where they are coming from what is the core behind this disruptive behavior can definitely help a teacher this would definitely need a lot of work to get into serious conversations reflection sessions one on one like a, a teacher a adult cannot be just you know objected in front of any they will feel very very it is it is a sort of a step back for them but when a teacher says that okay come let's sit let's have a healthy conversation let's reflect what is the challenge how can i help you can i be of help uh, in any challenges which you are facing in your tuitioning at your home within your friends there are so many concerns in the adults in the grown up it's not only around uh, the learning levels it's all around uh, the challenges in their family might be the the adolescent distraction which is happening the hormonal changes which is occurring so so many factors if a if a teacher is able to crack that that what is it behind then i think you know there this that is the first step to solve that but i totally agree uh, it happens but there are certain strategies which definitely uh, we can cover it's a good question we could cover up for the grown up kids uh, in the later sessions as well but uh, there's a plethora of strategies on the internet also which you can sir definitely go and research that how to uh, Uh, you know get into a behavioral management cycle for for adults but i think that the thing the first step to crack is to know them better that is what how i would uh, take the first step right right so prashant uh, in context to the same question i mean this the other question is in context of number of the students like uh, rajeshwari ma'am is asking does the number of student act as an important factor to implement the strategies of happiness classroom successfully she is sharing her personal experience where she is saying that she has successful in following most of the strategies in a class of 40 to 45 student but wasn't successful at all in a class of 65 to 70 students so she wants to know wants your guidance on how to successfully follow these strategies even with a larger audience yeah so again a real real ground level challenge karnika and uh, madam uh, I I think I totally agree with you. I empathize with you because it's not even the number. Uh, you know, a very important uh, might be a neglected element would be the space of the classroom. You know, if the space is also less and you have forty students, then also it becomes challenging to control that behavior because in a very uh, close trajectory, in a very close environment, students start pushing each other. If a student is not comfortable 
then definitely these are the natural behaviors, natural outcomes. So um, I don't have any answer for that, but still you have to try breaking those groups. So, you know, one of uh, uh, how I would have solved that challenges uh, would be a strategy to divide these students into small groups, make them sit in small circles so that I may be able to go and focus on, this to, on those circles individually rather than just addressing the large audience. So I might deliver my lesson 15, 20 minutes uh, to in a theater style, then try to arrange them in a small circles where though there might be some sort of a chaos in the classroom, noise levels might be high, but when you are in that circle, you as a teacher would be able to cater to the individual needs of those uh, students. And while dividing them into these circles, these small groups also, please uh, choose different strategies of making homogeneous or heterogeneous groups as per the strategy you might think. You know, at times you might just keep students of the same learning levels if they need to practice at certain object uh, objective, or if you want a peer learning to happen, then it has to be a mixed group. So this is how we can solve, but definitely the space, number of students, ideally, you know, that's the reason we say the, a healthy teacher is to pupil ratio. I would not put a number to yeah. it because India has a vast like sort of numbers to it, uh, but a healthy Teacher is to people ratio is again a very important element in the classroom happiness quotient. I totally agree right. with that. Right. Thank you, uh, Prashant. The, uh, okay, the other question asked by Mr. Vinod, Vinod sir, he's asking what is the main essential component that all have uh, happiness in the school as management students and being a teacher myself. So he wants happy he wants to know the happiness of all the stakeholders uh, in the school ecosystem not just the teacher okay what can be so, done in that regard yeah so i think uh, i hear a lot uh, i've heard in that song of bobby mcferrin uh, be don't worry be happy right so the happiness starts with a smiling face that first step of ours and that's how you get that virality of happiness I think involving all stakeholders in that happiness quotient is a little bit challenging, but it is a it is a sort of a task which you can own. Uh, so we know, sir, like if you take this task that uh, it's my KRA, it's my key responsibility area to spread uh, the happiness as a virality in my school environment. I think uh, with those attributes of not being tense, uh, carrying that warmth in your soul. Uh, making all the stakeholders invested towards the vision and making all of them realize that why, why are we here? Why are we in this school? If every stakeholder in a school ecosystem is able to answer that, and we as a community are able to reflect on the sense of our purpose, that what is the sense of purpose? You know, and when it aligns and common objective is that our children learn better, they are happy. I think gradually and slowly we are able to align to that common purpose of being happy um, as the ecosystem. That's how I would like to answer that. Yes, thank, thanks, Prashant. Yeah, uh, yes, Vagish, and Before, before yes. we uh, come to the announcement and other things, I would add to what Prashant was trying to say is this, is that uh, we all are teachers and uh, what we want that we uh, get together to learn from each other. Mm -hmm. And uh, that is why we are trying to make a community of learners here and uh, we re request you to come and join this group, those of you who have not joined it as yet, and also share some of the examples. I mean, there is one question uh, where a teacher was asking, what to do in a crunch situation, how to use TLA? So there is a sports day happening, and because of that, the uh, 30 days syllabus has to be covered in 15 days because students have to go there. Now, TLA are uh, so important, and how many teachers are doing it, uh, you can share and we can, you know, in that community, yeah. we can learn from each other's practices that we are doing. Yeah. So uh, my first uh, request would be that please come and join this community, uh, that WhatsApp community. We are sharing uh, one after the other very beautiful resources. Karnika has been sharing many of them with you. And also not just that it should be, it should not be one way flow, but it should come from you also. You should also share some of the things that how are you going to do uh, uh, some of these challenges? How are you dealing with that kind of a platform that we are trying to create? 
Right. Thank yes, you, Vagi sir. As Vagi sir is saying, we have I already had shared the link to join the WhatsApp community. It will be there in the chat group in the chat box. You can tap on the link and coin can join the WhatsApp community where we can start discussing on all the things. Um, but uh, um, along with it, even Rajeshwari, ma'am, she is requesting to take uh, another question which she has uh, asked earlier. Uh, it I guess uh, she has asked in context to the clubs keeping happiness clubs in the school how it can be i mean how what significance it can uh, you know extend to the whole school ecosystem she want your uh, your ideas on that having happiness club that was the question to be kadiga right sorry that was the question to be that uh, what yes, yes 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 oh, yes, that's yes, a yes. Brilliant idea i think you know happiness club uh, we would definitely uh, such a great thank you for suggesting that i was actually reading that chat Uh, yeah. I was about to cover. You raised this question. Uh, it's a brilliant idea, you know. Teaching communities, um, as we are already have started doing that school led teacher community as a practice. I think uh, Dr. Karnika adding um, the the happiness club where no teaching, nothing as business we would discuss, but it would be just sharing what makes you happy. So you know some stances. Um, I don't know how this platform is going to look like. Might be Insta, might be WhatsApp. uh but definitely there's a uh, there's a merit in thinking about formulation of such happiness clubs where teachers after a lot of uh, rigorous practice aggression coming back at least uske paas koi kandha to hona chahiye na so as a teaching community which rajesh ji rightly pointed out that being uh, together in itself as a community helps to reduce so much of stress so agar hum log ikatthe hain uh aur bagi ji ko maloom hai aapko iske upar kai share bhi aate hain to aap ek एक्सप्रेशन ऑफ है and how to harness that togetherness is a very important thing uh, right. and there are there can be various avenues of that togetherness we will have to be really uh, looking out uh, for those opportunities jahan we can celebrate uh, things uh, with the students with the teachers and uh, uh, good practices that are happening in the classroom something very funny that would have happened in the classroom yeah. and then you know taking taking some of those which generally Uh, makes you feel unhappy makes you feel insulted as you pointed out is that those insults may be coming through some external agency but those insults taking it lightly and making uh, them uh, wearing your uh, uh, humiliation lightly on you will uh, discourage them because you know as buddha said that uh, uh, somebody uh, abused someone so he said that did you take that abuse he said no no i did not Well, sir, but then that's fine. If you did not take the abuse, this is that that is gone. So Point that point. kind of yeah. No, no. So, please continue, sir. Yeah, so important because you know if somebody is trying to throw some mud, and if we are still laughing and we are not taking that mud on ourselves, it might be on a physical. It's on our body, but it's not on our soul. And that in the bomb, that smile, that behavior towards that person would in the next time definitely think. that i cannot just you know move this personality uh, from that centered calmness so it's so important to write and very right is to quote uh, buddha here as well totally right. so yeah just to let you all know that 30 teachers had already uh, joined our whatsapp group so thanks teacher for joining the group if any anyone else who wants to join the group please look on the chat box tap on the link and join our whatsapp community teachers community apart from the community group link here is one more link in the chat box which is for your attendance and feedback so please uh, tap on the link take 2 minutes and fill the uh, feedback form because it will mark your attendance and certificates will be given as per the attendance uh, form filled so please uh, take a look on the links i am sending the links again one more time we'll be waiting for you for two more minutes you can copy the links somewhere else and can uh, fill the form as well as join the whatsapp group sending the links again
so with that uh, comes up a very important uh, session on the teacher's happiness portion that we are trying to explore and understand and uh, this was a five uh, uh, part series of unwind that comes to a close with uh, uh, prashant's presentation we will be uh, coming back to you with another track and in the meanwhile i would request you to also suggest if there are something interesting and important that you would like us to talk about please suggest that also because ultimately we should be guided by you we are here to help you we are here to learn from you and uh, also uh, create a more meaningful classroom uh, situation thank you wagi sir thanks a lot prashan it was really a uh, wonderful listening to you you have explained all the strategies you know from the entry till the exit including classroom management behavior management lesson planning lot many things were talked about uh, during the discussion it was really amazing so i guess many of the teachers are resonating same with the thought because they have flooded the chat box with writing thanks for the wonderful session so uh, teachers again i have pasted the link uh, uh, in the chat box please do copy it if you are unable to do it right now do copy it and please paste it somewhere else and you can fill the form later on also but i will advise to everyone to fill your form because this will mark your attendance and then only your certificates will be given to you write your credentials properly and uh, thanks a lot once again to all the teachers and we will welcome you to our whatsapp community group thanks a lot thank, thank you. you so much thank 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 you thank you so much